All right, Bo, back over to you. And you're muted, Bo. All right, guys, so I'll tell you what I uh, wrote down here really quickly, and I hope some of you will share. It's just boom, boom, one or two words. Um, for me, um, I, what, that I, what I've committed to do is to give up surfing on the net, in particular on Facebook, because when I get in Facebook to go and send somebody a message or something like that, I absolutely start scrolling down and end up like 10 minutes later going, what am I doing? I'm just in the scroll hole, you know? Um, what else? Oh, and then the other thing is just a statement that we heard the other day uh, when we were watching The Social Dilemma, a documentary on social uh, media. And that is that I'm concentrating on making sure that I am using social media and social, but that social media is not using me. Uh, would anybody else like to share? Or will anybody else share, whether you like to or not, just jump in. <laughs> I've been in photography for quite a while, and uh, every once in a while, you know, I had to get out there and get that sunset, but I, I don't set up the camera, the tripod, I just use my phone and take a quick clip now and then. The other thing I gave up was housekeeping, and um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's that one didn't pay very well. <laughs> um, I, I want to be like Paula and have a housekeeper. So, yes, but anyway, get back to that one. Thank you, Deborah. Who else? I'll share something. Right. Um, yeah, and you've probably all heard this, and um, I'm just trying to do this every day, that when you wake up in the morning, don't look at your phone, except if you're using it for an alarm, and just give yourself that hour of not, not engaging, because what they say is you're either creating or you're responding to something that that's already going to send your mind in a place of of negativity, or you know, it's it's not focusing on what you want to create. So, Dorothy, no can problem. I ask a question? Dorothy, I'm sorry. What did you say? Say that again. May I make a suggestion? Absolutely. So what I would suggest you say is what I'm giving up is I'm not looking at my phone in the morning because what happens to me is that I end up, you know, whatever you just said, but instead what, if you notice what you just said is what, what, what happens when you look at your phone, then you do this and you do that. How do you know? You don't know anything about anybody else. You know what you do. So claim it, own it be accountable for your behavior. It's the only behavior you can, you can control and, and claim it. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to give up in the morning is looking at my iPhone because I'm going to become more productive. Absolutely. Thank you. It's so easy to see someone else or hear someone else say that. And then you realize, oh my gosh, thanks for letting me know too. So yeah. And, and I really, thanks for letting me know because yeah. I didn't know it. Yeah. Perfect. One of the Deborah, things you had one other thing to add? Sure. Yes. One of the things that I do when I want to just be on Facebook and scroll is that I stand up. It's not as comfortable. You know, it gives you a good reminder. How much time are you spending there? So that's what I do. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Kevin, you unmuted. Oh. You, may not have, you may not have wanted to, but you did. You're guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Um, Yes, giving up scrolling through social media and only going to social media with intent and intent to posts. I think I got um, I got twenty comments done on different posts. Nice. Yeah. nice. Anybody else, really quick, and then we'll move on to what Cindy was doing. Ruth, yeah, that's. Will, a, I will do Ruth and Dave. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. I'll, I'll, so <clears throat> the news. I'm really I'm limiting the news to ten minutes a day. That's oh, it, and I'm not looking it up online either. Uh, yeah, 10 minutes is probably too much, but good job. <laughs> yeah. Dave, real quick, and then we'll go over to Bobby. Uh, that was mine also, the news. So just limiting that. I get a few newsletters uh, with some headlines. And other than that, uh, don't watch the TV news and don't read any particular article unless it's something that really needs to be read. Uh, most of it, we don't 
we don't need to know the details. I'm just looking for trends and really the general nature of what's going on. Perfect. Bonnie, real quick, and then we'll move on to Cindy's stuff. Yeah, so uh, I just was going to make the comment that I have uh, an accountability partner and we actually say what we're going to do right away first thing in the morning. And so when I know exactly the four or five or six things that I have to do, that keeps me from scrolling on the internet, keeps me from going out and drifting through the living room and watching five minutes of a television program, keeps me on task and what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing. Perfect, Cindy, over to you. Okay, we're at the bottom of the half hour, so I'm gonna make this really quick, but I just want to put a seed, plant a seed in your brain that, um, and I, this is gonna sound doom and gloom and I, I don't know how to rephrase it to make it not seem, sound doom and gloom, but we are all gonna have something happen in our life. Peg had something happen this week that derailed her from her business, okay? You know, uh, Leland is supposed to lead the uh, Power Half Hour on Friday. He had something happen in his life that derailed him. He, you know, he had one plan, but God had another plan and, you know, it derailed him. That is going to be what constantly happens as we go forward. And it's just a matter of time before your car breaks down or you run out of gas or the washing machine breaks or, you know, the cleaning lady can't come or, you know, the trip you were going to go on is canceled or the, you know, you get it there. Life is going to throw you curveballs. Life is going to throw me curveballs. Life is going to throw all of us curveballs. That's why we buy insurance. Okay. Because we want to make sure that if something happens, we're covered. The best insurance that I believe people can invest in is starting in a sea of business. Because when those curveballs come, we didn't know Bo was going to break his neck. But when Bo broke his neck, we had a plan in place that would pay us on a weekly basis because we couldn't concentrate on building an ASEA business. We had to deal with hospitals and doctors and insurance and you know all that kind of stuff. So what I would keep in mind when you're talking to people, your posture is critical. And so if you're strong and grounded in your message, you, you know, what I like to think about is I'm going to be a human blessing to this person. And the way I'm going to be a human blessing to this person is I have no idea what is in their future. No, I do not have a crystal ball. But at some point in this person's life, if they say yes to me, when they need me, I've got their six, you know, I've got their back, right? So when they're, when, when they call me and they say, Cindy, man, uh, you'll never believe what happened to me. I'm, I can say to them confidently, don't worry about that. You go take care of your family first. I got your business today, right? This is a team sport. Nobody makes it on their own. And the, the power that we have is in the network. And it doesn't really matter whether you're making money off each other or not. Melanie, you made a very interesting comment yesterday about having a limited upline or limited resources that you can reach out to. That is complete scarcity mentality. There are 250,000 people in the ASEA network. We're one dream, one team, one family. This is not just a business, this is a mission. So, you know, get on purpose, decide what is, you know, the, how you're going to spend your time and when something derails you. It's not if something derails you. When something derails you, know that you have taken 100% responsibility for your life so that you're not going to go bankrupt. You're not going to lose your house. You're not going to, I just bought some products from Haiti yesterday and I was reading the card that came with the products that I bought. And it was telling me that the, pe the little kids that are in the orphanages in Haiti are there because their parents don't have a job. Their parents don't have a way to pay for them. So I feel really good buying these products from Haiti because I feel like I'm helping these little kids in orphanages. So, you know, the more money that we make, the more philanthropic we can be and the better place the world can be. So just some foods for thought. Uh, hold your head high, keep your sunny side up, put your shoulders back and do good work today. Be a force for good in the world. All right, goodbye everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Blessing.